So, in this presentation, I will make a robot classification based on their main features and elements. The aims of the presentation are, on the one hand, to classify robots according to their main features, such as the type of application for which they have been designed to, the working environment, their mobility, and their level of intelligence. In addition to this, I will also present the main elements that make a robot to be different one from each other, such as the mechanical structure, the type of sensors and actuators they have, as well as their control and power supply. Robots have a mechanical structure made up of links and joints. Links are powered by actuators, which in turn are powered by some source of energy source. All these elements will mainly affect to the robot mobility. Robots also have a control system that will possess data acquired from sensors and when put together, it will determine the degree of intelligence of a robot. The combination of all these elements will affect or will be affected, sorry, by the application and the environment where the robot works. On the next slides, I will carry out the robot classification based on some of their main elements and features. Unfortunately, not all elements and features have been considered for simplicity but at least I have included the vast majority of them. There are multiple applications in robotics. Here I highlight three main areas. Robots used in industrial environments, in applications such as welding, component assembling, painting, object manipulation, and machining, among others. On the other hand, there's a huge range of applications for non-industrial robots known as service robots where we can distinguish between two type of uh, service robots, professional uh, service robots and domestic uh, service robots. In the professional field, we can find robots that are used in tasks such as inspection, maintenance, cleaning, good supplies, among others. In domestic service robots, uh, they can be used, for instance, in applications for cleaning, care assistance for elderly people, entertainment, among others. Robots can work in multiple environments. Traditionally, we distinguish between structured environments in which all the elements that the robot can interact with are previously known or we have somehow a control over them. So the chances for colliding against a an obstacle or an object are low. This is the case of industrial environments using a robotic arm that uh, are inevitably uh, associated with the word structure environment. On the other hand, when the robot environment is not fully known or it might change, we refer to this situation as an unstructured environment. Clearly, all type of robots that move in terrestrial area or uh, underwater environments can be considered uh, under this consideration. In structured environments, the vast majority of elements are usually static while in unstructured environments, we can find situations with static or dynamic environments. Another way to classify robots is uh, through their mobility. That will be conditioned to their mechanical structure, the type of actuators and the type of power supply. Obviously, the environment and application will also affect because they provide the overall context where the robot is going to be used. We can distinguish between fixed and mobile robots. Mobile robots can have wheels, legs, or caterpillar chains. Also, we can find mobile manipulators, which are robotic arms mounted on a mobile base. On the other hand, some robots have a fixed link attached to the ground, the seal, or any other structure. This is the case of classic robot arms, parallel robots, and collaborative robots. Robots can have different degrees of intelligence. There are robots with low or non-intelligence, such as those used in teleoperation applications, those that have a fixed or repetitive program that are programmed in a, in a way that they have no consideration of that the environment can change, that is, and they, they are used in structured environments or those that have a primitive intelligence reacting to changes of the environment, acting basically as a bug. 
Then we have also robots with higher degrees of intelligence, for instance, those that can detect or avoid obstacles and process sensor data in a more elaborated way. Those that include elements that make the system safer. Some robots also may include map building, localization, road, road optimization, among other features that allow them to work in semi-structured environments. And of course, the robots with much higher degree of intelligence that include features such as exploration, simultaneous localization and map building or SLAM, motion planning, object manipulation, robot learning, human-robot interaction, etc. As you already know, robots have different mechanical structures. There are some that have the appearance of a vehicle with a mobile base, such as some robotic toys, AGVs, that is, autonomous guided vehicles, autonomous vehicles, UAVs or AUVs, that are aerial and underwater uh, robots. These type of robots have the main characteristic that they have the ability to move in a specific or certain environment. Then we have classic anthropomorphic robot arms, also parallel robots and collaborative robots that are mainly used in the industry. There are mechanical also there, sorry, there are robots with a mechanical structure that is bio-inspired, that is that robots look like humans, for instance, or animals that try to mimic their mobility. This robot can easily move on uneven terrains. And in the case of human robots, they can also use, for instance, the same tools as humans without the need of adapting them. Most of robot actuators are direct current or alternating current motors. Depending on the size, speed, torque, and power features required on each of the applications, we can choose between one type of or another type of motor. In DC motors, we can find brushed motors for the ease uh, in changing their direction and speed, but also we can find brushless motors like the ones used in many drones. We can also find servo motors that are motors with a position control system. The vast majority of AC motors used in robotics are asynchronous motors that can be, uh, found, uh, or can be used um, in the single phase or three phase mode, depending on the power demands. In addition to these type of motors, there are other type of motors such as stepper motors, hydraulics, pneumatic, piezoelectric motors, etc. But comparatively speaking, their use is much slower than the previous ones. The power supply of a robot can be external or internal. That is, the robots have the power supply incorporated. Depending on their energy consumption needs, a robot with an external power supply can be powered with a single phase or three phase AC current, direct current, solar, combustion, among other power supplies. Robots with an incorporated power supply will work usually in direct current mode from rechargeable lithium ion batteries, LiPo, that is lithium polymer batteries, lead acid or nickel cadmium batteries, among others. In some cases, the robots may incorporate non rechargeable cells, and some of them may include power banks, which is nothing more than batteries, but with a built-in electronics for charging the battery, and also a voltage regulation system to adapt to the uh, 5 volts USB standard. Robots can be manually controlled, semi-automatic or fully automatic. In manual control decisions are only made by the human operator and thus the robot acts as a machine to be controlled. Robots with semi-automatic control are used in applications where the decisions are shared. Part of them are taken by the human but other decisions are taken by the robot. This is the case of ADAS, Advanced Driving Assistant Systems, Haptics, Exoskeletons, Prosthetics and Collaborative Robots. Anyway, the vast majority of robots are operated in automatic mode, such as is the case of most of industrial programmable robots, intelligent vehicles, assistive robots, and many others. And finally, the sensors are a fundamental part of a robot because they provide essential information to interact with the environment. They can be classified based on the nature of the variable they can measure. 
If they measure internal variables, these sensors are known under the name of proprioceptive sensors, which is the case of potentiometers, encoders, accelerometers, gyroscopes, among others. Sensors used to measure external variables are known as stereoceptive sensors. There's a huge variety of sensors using different measurement principles and technologies, such as the case of lasers, ultrasounds, infrared sensors, cameras, force and torque sensors, satellite-based location systems, etc. In this presentation, I have made a general classification of robots in order to provide a broader vision of many types of robots. For the reminder, of course, we will focus on industrial robots. Thank you very much.